Hey everybody, this is your old Aunt Bibi. Uh, today is Sunday, May 27th. It's 9 p.m. I wanted to do another video today. And I'm taking a page out of the book of uh, Hard Bastard's channel. Old school style. Now Hard Bastard, I always admired him for the way he could really deconstruct uh, the lies and propaganda in the uh, complicit media. And I've watched Hard Bastard since uh, February of last year. And I always admired the way he was able to pick apart these pieces. But this is hard for me to say, but Hard Bastard, um, he's lost his touch. And so I'm going to do to him what he used to do to the complicit media. Um, I like Hard Bastard personally. He's always been very kind to me. Um, we had our issues uh, early and when I used to disagree with him last year. But uh, he's been pretty decent to me. Um, I would send him... A few times I sent him email and he would reply and thank me and uh, use the information I gave him. And a few weeks ago, I called into his show to explain to him the situation about maker support and that fraud. And he, he had looked into it and he agreed with me um, cautiously, but he was still pushing the narrative that the, the, the maker support failure might have been a political takedown, but I didn't agree with that. Anyway, um, so this is a video that was posted on Hard Bastard's Hard News Network channel. It's from um, three days ago, and it's a segment from one of his live streams. That's what he does now. He does a lot of live streams where he just goes from article to article and or video to video. And um, he just provides commentary on them. And uh, the problem is I don't think he's really doing his research anymore. So he's missing some details. So this is a video that he did about Trump canceling the summit meeting with Kim Jong-un. Now things have changed a little bit since then. But this was what was going on at the time. So it, the video is about 15 minutes long. And I want to play the whole thing. So you're going to have to be patient because... I think it's important to listen to the whole thing to really get a feel for um, how really shocking his commentary is on this. So anyway, let's get started. Um, well, first of all, let me explain. He's uh, reviewing an article, a very short, vague article that's missing a lot of details from the Daily Caller, which is a right-wing outlet. And um, what I found kind of... Um, Disturbing is that he did not even provide the link to the article that he reviewed in the show notes. Now, if you look at the show notes here, he's got uh, he's got all these links on how to support his um, news outlet through PayPal, Streamlabs, Bitcoin, all the crypto. Uh, yeah, and he's got an Amazon link, Amazon affiliate link. Patreon, and then his, uh, his social media connections. Oh, and then he's got an ad here for Lone Star Guitars, one of his sponsors. But there, there is no link to this uh, Daily Caller article. So um, I have the link here. Here's the article. It's very short. This is the Ar Daily Caller article. And it's very, very short. There's not a lot of detail. Anyway, so let's start to listen to Hard Bastard's take on this article. Okay. We have a, a bunch of news and then some videos to go over. Trump cancels the U.S.-North Korea summit. This is good and bad news. The bad news, it doesn't seem that the summit is happening, although it still could. I, I almost view the way Trump negotiates with Kim jong -un as almost a way you have to negotiate with a difficult woman. Uh, not now, did you get that? Right off the bat, hard bastard 
is comparing Kim Jong Un to a difficult woman. Now, that's a problem in two ways. Like, as a woman, uh, that's a stereotype about women, women being difficult. And I don't, I've never understood that. I just find that people are difficult. And um, I don't know, a lot of men, if, if a woman is standing up for herself, um, there are a lot of men who will say, oh, she's being difficult. So uh, right off the bat, he's <laughs> putting women, making the stereotype about difficult women. Now, the only thing I can think of that he's doing here is I know, I know I, I wasn't watching Hard Bastard for a while. Was Occasionally I would drop into his live streams, but I was not watching them for a while. And he used to date, um, a young woman from another channel who had another who had a channel of her own, Aiden Paladin. And when I came back recently, I learned that the he and Aiden had broken up. So the only thing I can figure is that he's still kind of uh, I don't know. If he probably won't like wouldn't like me saying this, but he's probably still working through that. I don't know. Maybe there were some problems in that area there. I don't know, but um, so. This is not the way he used to talk when he was with Aiden. So, and I don't, I don't know if he really talked that way before he was with Aiden. I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> Kim Jong Un is a difficult woman now. Okay. Not that all women are difficult, but some women can certainly be difficult. And uh, when we go over his word, to explain kind of what I mean here. Um, but unfortunately, uh, and this is the good news. Uh, Kim Jong-un made comments, the vice president of the United States, that unfortunately made Trump agreeing. Hold on. Now, he's saying Kim Jong-un made statements that made Trump cancel the meeting. Well, no, it wasn't Kim Jong-un. And... Uh, I don't think the, the... I don't think even the Daily Caller article said that. It just says uh, comments from North Korea. So there, Harbaster is not even following this article, what it says in the article. And and the comments that came from um, North Korea actually came from, um, blah, 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 blah. it was, oh, it was, um, Yes, it was um, North Korea's vice foreign minister and, and nuclear negotiator, uh, Cho Sun Hee. So it was not Kim Jong Un who made that these comments. So he's got that wrong. So let's listen to this again. To this summit, if he had gone through with it, he made the comments after it was agreed to, but uh, in the middle of the agreement. Um, Kim Jong-un talks shit about Pence, and I think if you kind of don't do anything about that, you look like a bitch. <laughs> Kim Jong-un talks shit about Pence, and if you don't do something about that, you look like a bitch. Hmm, that's interesting. So, um, yeah, so the response to Pence was actually because of uh, John Bolton, and Mike Pence were making these very threatening sort of comments about that uh, North Korea uh, needed to denuclearize right away and that uh, they were going to be dealt with the way Libya was dealt with. So um, that's why there was this uh, response from the North, from North Korea, from the North Korean official. given that we had eight years of, even if you like Obama, I think you have to admit, he kind of looked like on the world stage. And even if you want to get behind him on that, you, you, you would at least have to admit that he didn't have the respect of world leaders. So I think the there was a little glitch in the sound there, but um, he was saying that Obama was weak on the world stage. Now, I don't understand how you say how you could say Obama's weak on the world stage. Obama uh, took two wars. He inherited two wars and he expanded them to seven. Like, how is that weak? <laughs> and um, 
and Obama, at least Obama, the, the Iran deal was worked out under Obama's administration. I'll give him that. So I don't know where Harvester gets this at Obama's week. Blame them if you want to, I think, but ultimately, that's not good. I have, I have often compared uh, world politics to the Coke game. I think it, it's very similar. Uh, you have a combination of businessmen and you have some lunatics. And uh, any sort of weakness, I think, is preyed upon. So in the world state, world politics, it's um, businessmen and lunatics. <laughs> so Trump, he's sort of saying Trump is um, a reasonable businessman and then suggesting that Kim Jong-un is a lunatic. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's the other way around because <laughs> Kim Jong-un seems quite reasonable when he's met with a uh, President, President Moon and, and the statements that have been made. So I don't know where he gets that. This is this is just pure Trump apology, you know, apologizing for Trump. I don't I don't know what's going on here. Um, so we can't be weak. We can't look weak. So I think this is necessary. I do think it's unfortunate, but I think there's a chance of this to happen. President Donald Trump canceled the U.S. North Korea summit scheduled to take place on June 12th, he said in the letter, I'm going to read this letter. This is what I mean, We're talking about uh, uh, dealing with the difficult one. Uh, dear uh, Mr. Ch uh, and, and there he says it again. This is <laughs> when he's getting ready to read the article. He says it's, it's again, he's repeating this. It's like dealing with a difficult woman negotiating with Kim Jong-un. This is uh, his excellent to his excellency, Kim Jong-un. Chairman of the State Affairs Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Pyongyang. Dear Mr. Chairman, we greatly appreciate your time, patience, and effort with respect to our recent negotiations and discussions relative to a summit long sought by both parties, which was scheduled to take place on June 12th uh, in Singapore. We were informed that the meeting was requested by North Korea, but that to us is totally irrelevant. I, that was a very good move there. I like that. Uh, making it clear that... Um, uh -huh. You, you have to and he's praising this letter this letter was very awkward and the wording let me show you something the wording the letter was so terrible that on social media somebody posted donald trump's letter and they just went through it with a red pen and marked all the problems and the and the grammar and everything and they gave they gave his letter an f so <laughs> And Hard Bastard is praising the letter. Good one. Make, you can't make North Korea believe that they can fuck with you. They can uh, uh, in any way uh, bully you. So to say uh, it's totally irrelevant that the media was requested by North Korea, I do like that. Anyway, I was <sighs> very much looking uh, forward oh my God. there with you. Sadly, sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it's inappropriate at this time to have this long planned meeting. So, you know what I like about this? It opens with a, because all these arguments they, they make about Trump being un unhinged, and granted, I'm sure people uh, drafted this letter, but this is really well, well done. So in the beginning of this, you, you are showing respect, right? Um, because I think it was always a mistake the way that they would act like just even talking to North Korea is unacceptable. Previous administrations are talking about it. You can't do that either. You have to be balanced. So you're like showing the a normal amount of respect, but then you're you're basically saying because of your disrespect, because I am not a pussy, I am unfortunately not going to be able to go along with this. It's a nice balanced le letter. It's almost <laughs> pussy. Now oh, he just I just can't get over what he's saying about this letter and and praising trump i mean the the letter the way it's written it's just terrible so he thinks he thinks that trump is standing up to lunatic kim jong-un the difficult woman it's almost like a solid text that you send to a girl that's playing games or being disrespectful and now here he goes <laughs> he's, he's comparing this letter to a text being sent to a difficult girlfriend <laughs> It's, it's amazing. Anyway, um, sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it's inappropriate at this time to have this long plan meeting. Therefore, please let this, like, almost like, 
if you have a girl that's like constantly rescheduling, you know how sometimes that'll happen, particularly in the beginning. They'll, they'll, they'll now, to see if they can... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, he, he again, he's comparing Kim Jong-un to some uh, difficult girlfriend that keeps rescheduling or something. I just can't get over this. Reschedule some shit over and over again to see if he'll go along with a good little doggy, right? It's almost like he's like, you, you know, you're, you're uh, scheduling shit too much, so unfortunately, I have plans that night. I'm going to have to uh, decline, but you know, have fun. Uh, you know, maybe we'll uh, see each other soon. V very good. Anyway, um, I feel it's inappropriate at this time to have this long planned meeting. Therefore, please let this letter serve to represent the Singapore summit for the good of both parties, but to the detriment of the world, will not take place. You talk about your nuclear capabilities, but ours are so massive and powerful that I, <laughs> that I pray to God they will never have to be used. <laughs> Now, he thinks this is funny. He thinks this letter is funny. But this letter is pathetic. I mean, this is a head of, a, head of state writing a letter to another head of state. And her bastard is comparing it to a text from a boyfriend to a girlfriend um Telling her, you know, it's off or, I don't know, we'll have to take a break or something. I just can't believe this. Now, I know it's insane to laugh at this because we are actually talking about real nuclear weapons, right? So, like, the fate of the world, to a degree, you could argue, is at stake here. But the way that this is written is hilarious. It's almost like he's talking about his cock. <laughs> I felt a wonderful dialogue was building up between you and me. And ultimately, it is only that dialogue that matters. Someday... I look very much forward to meeting you. In the meantime, I want to thank you for the release of the hostages who are now home with their families. That was a beautiful gesture and was very much appreciated. This, again, this is balanced. This is... This is balanced? This is... <laughs> these are very sensitive negotiations. And Trump is just uh, caving into his uh, warmongering uh, advisors and canceling the summit. It's balance. The way the media portrays Trump, it would almost be like they would think he would write a letter like, listen, you fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. If you say anything else, we're going to nuke your asses. But no, he didn't say that. He actually then, so he starts out with, hey, respect. Then you disrespected me. So there's a penalty that has to be paid. So hard bastards think that this is how diplomacy is conducted. Oh, my God. And then he goes back to more respect because the guy did it gesture releasing the hostages that you have to respect if you're trying to negotiate you're negotiating with someone they give you something that you want you have to respect that very balanced so far dark news or hb i am sad won't be around to stalk you in dc this weekend heading out of town for vacation dicks out for north korea dicks out for kim gorilla style yeah i'm not sure what we're doing as far as any sort of meetups i don't think we're doing anything so this is what Hard Bastard does in his live stream. So he's he's pandering to the live chat the audience because they will give him pay him super chats. And I don't know, it's just a sad situation. This time, but the uh, August one definitely uh, will be. And, and like I said, I'll get into details in regards to that. Um, Thank you, Dark News Network. If we do do something on, see, this is the problem. I just don't see how you we could both do the call-in show on Saturday, and like I just don't think it's possible. See, this is gonna... this is what Harbaster does. He, he is he works his butt off to please his audience, so he will do these long live streams. And on top of that, uh, quite often on Saturday nights, usually he'll do a call-in show or something. And so it's it's all to keep his audience entertained and happy and, you know, keep the money flowing. And and this is what it's come to. It's going to be, what are they, four hours, at least five hours. It's going to last probably until one or two o'clock in the morning. And uh, so, but anyway, when we do the um, August thing, we'll definitely. Something. Anyway, thank you very much. The Dark News Network. Next, Lone Star Guitars. Now the Dems are defending Kim Jong-un and MS-13. I haven't uh, 
I'm kind of in a rush this morning. So here, this super chat, this person is comparing um, North Korea and Kim Jong Un to the MS-13 uh, gang. Great. He's doing some other shit, and uh, I haven't seen any fallout from this in the corporate media yet. I haven't like looked at, at what they were saying. That's amazing if they're going to try to uh, suggest what this was a bad move and Trump should have just bent over. Yeah, he he's not Obama. He's not going to do that. Thank you, Lone Star Guitars. All right, let's continue here. Uh, C. Thomas, the peasant. What we have come to when the left will white knight for a crazed communist monarch and a mafia from savages. Yeah, this is. Oh, my God. <laughs> so Hard Bastard's audience is very much. Uh, this is another reason I stopped watching. It's um, overwhelmingly um, Trump supporters Trump apologists, um, and people just tolerate this. And, you know, there would be the odd person leaning, left leaning, and it would be increasingly difficult to, um, communicate with people in the chat. Um, you'd often run into people who just trash your views and, uh, it's very difficult where we are this is where we are and if there's a lot of uh, uh, talk about commies and communist dictators and all that and it's just it's it's a lot to, it's hard to take um, this isn't the first time of course that they've defended Kim Jong-un during the Olympics they had his sister who was basically the head of like the Ministry of Propaganda for North Korea I don't know if that's what it's called but it's whatever the propaganda department and uh, they were like praising her and disrespecting Pence. Well, I <laughs> what I seem to remember is that Pence was not being respectful at the um, at that ceremony. And here, our bastard is uh, talking about the North Korea's uh, uh, someone from the propaganda ministry. Well, you want to talk about propaganda ministry? You know, the U.S. government. <laughs> They basically one big propaganda ministry. Uh, you can look. I, even if, I mean, even if he was the fucking emperor, and he was electroshocking gay people, um, or or and all of that is bullshit. But I'm saying, even that being the case, the the idea that you would somehow praise a person who runs a country that locks up uh, people in concentration camps for slight disagreement. Uh, um, is, well, you want to talk about the prison industrial complex in the U.S.? That's like a concentration camp system. It's ridiculous. I mean, being realistic, Pence supported a bill that um, viewed, um, and, and, and again, I think the any of this uh, gay conversion therapy shit is 100% bullshit. It's completely discredited. It, it, I, I have no problem with gay people. Being gay is completely natural. It's it's found in nature. Why wouldn't it be found in human beings? Now, of course, I know the religious right definitely against that because we're all special creatures, each individually made by God, yada, yada, yada. But with all of that being the case, um, how could you possibly support a dictator who's putting people in concentration camps while decrying Trump and his administration for being fascist? Well, because this North Korean dictator is trying to bring peace to the Korean Peninsula and negotiate denuclearizing. So why, what's wrong with this? That's pretty sensible. All because you don't like Pence because of this completely overplayed bullshit about him supporting electroshock therapy. That's not the case. Um, is he uh, uh, anti uh, Gay, gay marriage. Uh, yeah, I believe he's he's completely a biblical Christian in that regard. Um, but like, we're really at a point where we're going to compare biblical Christians to dictators. I think I'd take the biblical Christians. But actually, in a lot of these cases, I would take the. Biblical. Oh my God. <laughs> Christians, anyway. <laughs> I never thought I would say that. Thank you, T. C. Thomas. Did I read that awful thing? Yeah, I did. Well, I think I'd take Kim Jong Un. He's a lot more reasonable than Mike Pence. Gothic. Trump essentially sent a letter with wording compared to two 
a mob boss. Yeah, are they now? Is is the the corporate media? Are they arguing that he was acting like a mob boss? I do think it's very boss like, though. I will give him credit. He's basically saying this is a really balanced way to deal with someone. You disrespected me, so therefore there has to be a penalty. However, if you change your mind and you start showing respect, he's talking about this situation as though it were a situation in a gang or something. You're showing me disrespect, well, yeah, gee. Then we can have a conversation. It's, it's. I'm telling you, it's very similar to, uh, yeah. When you're done like fucking around with rescheduling and you want to like play this straight, you know, text me. Thank you. Here we go. He's back to the, the difficult woman situation, the difficult girlfriend. Cartoon Network this is called a praise sandwich. Meet between. Yeah, that's a good one. A praise sandwich. I like that. That's a good phrase. James Dietrich loves this. He's respectful at the same time as he maintains the superior position of the U.S. and is dismissive of the threats. Perfectly toned. It really is a well done letter. Um, I was nervous. Are you kidding me? That's the worst letter I've ever... I could not believe that they let this letter go out like this into the public because it's just ridiculous. It's just poorly written. It's just <laughs> stupid. Going into this, I was like, what, what is this letter going to say? Um, it, it's really good. I think it's really good. Thank you, James. Because, uh, yeah, I, I do put a lot on this summit as far as this is a problem that needs to be resolved. North Korea is a problem that needs to be resolved one way or the other, and I would prefer that to be diplomacy. But if it can't be just diplomacy, I don't know what else you can do. Uh, well, at least he's saying that he would like to see it settled diplomatically. Okay, good. Um, you have a person that is de developing nuclear weapons that I, I don't think there's any uh, evidence to, to show that once he uh, completes the mission and has the ability to send long-range weapons over to America. I have no evidence to indicate that he's going to hold any sort of restraint or, or not try to make a, a move of some sort. Well, the reason for having these nuclear weapons is, is to avoid um, a situation of regime change that the U.S. is so infamous for. So it has, something has to be done. You can make the same argument with North Korea, I mean with uh, Iran, but you know, one thing at a time. Oh no! See, here he goes with Iran. That's another situation where they want to, they want to take the Iranian regime down. Well, wow! One death to America, country at a time. Uh, ah, let's see. Now. Look at that! One death to America, country at a time. Great. Where he was here. Uh, final paragraph. If you change your mind. <sighs> I love this. If you change your mind having to do with the mo this most important summit, please do not hesitate to call or write. Uh, the world, and North Korea in particular, has lost a great opportunity for lasting peace and great pros prosperity and wealth. This missed opportunity is a truly sad moment in history. Sincerely yours, Donald J. Trump. I think it's, it, he literally closed this letter with the, if you change your mind, send me a text. <laughs> He's still he's sticking with this difficult girlfriend, texting a difficult girlfriend again situation. Incredible. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love that. All right, well, there you go. Bad news and good news. You know, I, I I think that I ultimately wanted the summit to happen, but you can't do the summit if you're gonna look like a bitch on the world stage. You cannot do that. And so so Trump has balanced. Um, look, you know, I'm usually in a position where I'm defending Trump from media bullshit, but I'm doing that from the standpoint of the media is being dishonest. Um, I, I, I think this is. Well, hard bastard, I think you're being dishonest or you're leaving out a lot of facts. Um, you know, there are articles here that John Bolton was actively trying he's actively trying to undermine this um peace deal and undermine the summit and um and and pence was chiming in and saying the same thing that well they were both uh saying that uh north korea would get the libya treatment is what they were saying so harbester has left out all these details one of the few areas where i would 
genuinely offer praise to Trump for making a good move here. I really do think this letter is well done. And frankly, I think this letter... Our bastard has no idea what he's talking about here. It's really sad. You know, he used to be really good at uh, researching these pieces and and bringing out details that are left out, that the media is left out. Well, he's leaving out a lot here. ...is so well done that it's very possible this meeting could happen because it allows North Korea to basically... Look, he, it doesn't require North Korea to get on its knees and suck America's cock. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not about Felicia. Show some fucking respect. Show the normal amount of respect that you would for the United States. Don't talk shit about people. Don't try to fucking uh, uh, pull your dick out and measure. Uh, Everyone's going to come to this uh, uh, summit and have a respectful conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But it also allows North Korea wow. to, to say some sort of bullshit yeah. like, um, oh my gosh. I don't know. I mean, it would require maybe not a direct apology, but maybe some sort of statement that's acceptable, that, that Trump can accept, that's like acknowledging that talking shit about Pence was unacceptable. Frankly, I'd love to see just, why, don't, why doesn't everyone just throw John Bolton under the bus? Yeah, there you go. No, this is, he's ending it right. Be like, look, like you can even blame Bolton now. I don't know if Trump would accept that because he's still a part. Yeah, let's blame Bolton because he is to blame. He and Pence. Now this is what he doesn't get. He 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 understands that Pen that Bolt John Bolton is bad news, but he doesn't realize that Bolton was um, one of the reasons for this uh, Trump canceling this meeting part of the, uh, the the administration but as far as i'm concerned why don't everyone just throw bolton under the bus and uh, call it a day and have the sun throwing bolton under the bus as if he's innocent no bolton is to blame for this happening in the first place that would be my lone star guitars i super guitars lone star guitars that's class and boss yeah it's 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 well done it's very well done dark news network fear is the mind killer trump is a berserk fear is the mind killer Absolutely. Yeah, this was good. I, I can't wait to see what the, the media says. <laughs> People in the chat, yeah, blame Bolton. No one likes Bolton. I don't. I don't like Bolton. I, I've never liked him. Uh, that was a bad move. Uh, that was one of the criticisms I had. Well, yeah, because you're not getting it. This Bolton is why Trump canceled the meeting. Bolton and Sessions, not a fan. Okay. Well, that's it. Okay. Well, that's it. So that's his analysis of Trump canceling the meeting with Kim Jong-un, that it's like dealing with a difficult woman or a difficult girlfriend. Great. So anyway, um, I, I just couldn't believe when I, when I first started watching this video, I, I just listened a little bit and then I turned it off. And then I just forced myself to go back and listen to the whole thing. And I just couldn't believe. Um, he just left out some, he didn't, he didn't do basic research, you know, and the, this daily caller article is ridiculous. It, it leaves out so much anyway. So sadly, hard bastard is not doing the kind of work that he used to, that I used to enjoy. And you know, who did, um, if you really want someone who's going to go after, these stories and give you the facts and do the research go to scott creighton's channel church dog 42 or his website american everyman because he did he did what hard bastard used to do and so that's really sad and that's what's happened to hard bastard and I, i'm sorry to say because I, I i like the guy and I used to enjoy his work, but this is, this is not good. Okay. That's all for now. Thanks for your patience and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.